you know me from Vintage 61 Storehouse in Orangeburg, Pennsylvania. Um, I've been invited by the people at Miss Mustard Seed to bring you some smaller um, videos about design work that I've been showing you on our bigger videos. So um, let's get started. I have in front of me these old, old frames. You've seen them a hundred times and you've always said there's something about them I like. I don't know how to use them. They don't work in the design of my house. So I'm going to show you some ways to reinterpret it and some interesting photo options to take with it. So what I've been doing to get us started is just kind of cleaning up the frames. A lot of them come with these small little tiny old rusted nails in them and they're so easy to pull out and you just grab them with a needle nose plier pull them straight out or you might find if it's right next to you you're twisting it out whatever makes it easier if you have glass in these work on a couple sides first slide the glass out and then take the rest out otherwise you run the risk of cracking the glass and cut, getting cut so this one has all of that out. Um, this gold one over here has it out. And then this one here has a ton more to go. And this is gonna take a little bit more of a wiggle. But what you'll notice is also here is we have um, the old wiring. And that's just not gonna do. We're gonna need to um, get that off. If, if you want to reuse it, you really run the risk of this falling on the floor because they break down over time, these wires. So um, I'm going to go ahead, look at this, this one's been knotted. I guess they wanted it shorter on the wall. But if you notice in this needle nose plier, there's this little hole here. That little space right there is a wire cutter. And you just have to get in there, pull on it and wiggle and it'll come off. All right, so that's, just throw it on the floor, the cats can play with it. We're a safe home. Um, and then you're just gonna go ahead and put your needle nose in there and turn it in the opposite direction that it screws. You can also do this with a small screwdriver, even a pen, depending on the diameter of the hole. But they come right out. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And this one's so easy, I can use my hand. All right, I have a few more nails to get out of that. I'll do that off camera. But um, I wanted to show you, all you're going to do is you're going to purchase something like these small nails. And we'll replace, we can even have used the same holes, and we'll replace those at the end of our project. And while I have you here, let me show you what I'm using today. This is just a standard paint bucket. I like them because they have lids you can put on them. So after you mix them and you've been painting for a while, you want to take a break or you want to resume the next day, these products will last in the refrigerator. Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint is milk-based. So once it's mixed up, if you leave it out, it will spoil just like milk. So instead, we put the lid on, we put it on the fridge. If you don't have a lid handy, I love the cling um, wrap that you just can press and seal. That works well. So I'm going to work with a color called typewriter today. That's a really, really nice black. It's nice and dense and it's got some dimension to it. Comes in a bag just like this and you're going to do equal portions of the milk paint to warm water. Warm water is key. So I'm just, I'm taking a lot because I know what size my project is. You can do much less than this. But I'm taking a half a cup, putting it in here, and I'm going to mix in a half a cup of water. And I have this waiting for me. It's all warm. And you can eyeball this when you begin to become comfortable with this. You can decide, I want it a little thinner, I want it a little thicker for your application. And you might add more water, you may not. Or if you want it really thick, my whisk has a tail on, he's capturing everyone. So we're just gonna whisk it up. And I find if I leave it stand a few minutes, I get a better consistency.
And while I do this, I'll take a little break. I'll get our frames ready and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, so I finished up taking the um, hardware out of those old frames and our mixture is kind of the consistency of old pancake batter. I think I want it just a hair thinner, not very much. I'm gonna add just a drop because in this application, it doesn't need to be very thick. And one of the options I have at this point is to add a bonding agent. So it, with a bonding agent, it's going to um, make a nice hard adhere to the item that you're painting. But I don't mind if this gets a little chippy. I never know what's gonna happen. Chippy could be just you know a few little flakes, a few little crackles, or it could be big sections. But I like the randomness of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint these without bonding agent. And I am gonna add a brand new product, my first time using it, so we can figure this out together. It is Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Mix Easy. Sometimes when you're working like this, you can see some air bubbles in there. Let's see if you nice and close. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a few drops, no science to this. Well, there's probably science to this, but I don't know it. So we're just gonna make a few drops. Let's try three, four. And what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of some of those air bubbles. So I have a smoother application. Looks really pretty. All right. I'm going to start on this one over here. And I'm going to start on the back. Well, let's go ahead and do the front. More interesting for what we're doing. Um, you'll notice that it is showing its age. It's got a ding here and some chips here and some chips here, and I welcome that. That's going to also add to the randomness. And because I wanted to have the ability to chip, I didn't get crazy about cleaning it. Because any oils, wax, any buildup that's on this is going to repel the paint slightly. It's going to start my chipping process. But we'll see, this stuff may just also adhere. Again, it's random. So I'm gonna get my milk paint on any synthetic, inexpensive brush. We're not buying expensive brushes here. Not buying expensive brushes here. And I'm just gonna start painting. Now when you start working with it, I want you to be as creative as you wanna be. In this case, if I were to do just a light brush, I could give that, that detail a little bit more emphasis. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a solid coat and come back and do some sanding because I want a little control over that. So I'm gonna fill all those little spaces. I have a drop cloth down so I can get as messy as I want to. I'm actually at my dining room table right now. You're in my home. And uh, as we do these small videos, I'll show you more and more of the house. All right, so let's pretend I've done it all and uh, we'll come back with them finished. But one of the things we're gonna be doing is measuring our openings and cutting some things in place. So I'll be back in a moment to show you that. Okay, so two of our frames are painted and they're off to the side drying right now. I have one of the frames that I did not paint yet, only because it's nice and dry and I can use it for an example. But what you wanna do is you wanna measure from the inside edge, and this is flipped backwards, and to the inside edge. So on the reverse side of the frame, I'm measuring and I get 22, and maybe a 16th, but we'll say 22. But I also want to measure it down at the bottom. Because this is so old, it could have gotten out of square, it might have warped. So whatever is the smaller of the two measurements, that's the one I'm going to go by. And that one here is 22 and 16th as well. And going in the opposite direction, I have 28 and an eighth. And here I have just a little bit more than that, but I'm gonna say 28th and an eighth. All right, so we're ready to cut our um, finished piece. Now, what do we put in these frames? 
They can be any old artwork that you have, something you came across in a thrift shop you just love but didn't love the frame. And it could be what I did in this case was I took some of my own photographs and I sent it to a home office supply store, in this case Staples, and got a poster print. And I asked for it on semi-gloss. And it's not that expensive for an original piece of art. It is between 10 and $30, depending on the size. And my largest size was the 30, and my smaller ones are in the $20, $15 range. So in this case, this is for our smaller frame. This is one of my own photos. Just taken a week ago in our last snowstorm. It's just a tree, really high contrast and snow on the uh, branches, which you may or may not be able to see. Underneath it, I have one of those cutting mats that just is self-sealing and it has measurements on it, so I can go ahead and line it up. All right, everybody squared off, seems to be. And I'm just gonna go ahead and with a nice new blade, that should have taken just one swiping, except for at the top. All right, there. square it off. But when you're dealing with protecting the visual part that you're saving, have your T-square on the side of the artwork that is um, going to be one of your fit part of your finish. So whatever's going to be cut off is on the outside, and whatever is being saved is going to be on the inside. In order to do that, I'm going to turn this around. So because I'm a righty, because whenever you're working with knives, you don't cross over and do something. You go on that side of your body, whichever is your power side. Squared off on my mark. Right hand side, go ahead and use my X-Acto. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing that on the other side and I'll come back and show you some more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to adhere the photograph to a piece of foam core. Um, foam core is the most affordable at the dollar store. If it's not for a major project where you need it really thick, go ahead and pick it up at the dollar store. And um, I've been really happy with what I've gotten there. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this in place. And I'm going to firm up one side with some clips. but I need it the other way around. All right, I've married to the straight line. And then this is where I'm going to mount it to the board. So one of the projects that most people don't know about is this roll of tape. Um, you get it in art supply stores. I got this in Blick Art Supplies. And it peels up and it has almost like a rubber cement on the other side and then you peel the paper off. So you have a very strong contact um, with this that's more professional. So I have a cap on my foot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take it to the corner. I'm gonna work it down. And if I get a little crinkle, don't worry, because it's just rubber cement on the other side. You can take an X-Acto knife and just pull. Find a little edge. I have really short fingernails right now. And the rubber cement or the rubber cement like will be um, adhered to the other side. I want you to take it from the middle so you make sure you don't have any puckers and take it to the middle like that. We're gonna do the same thing in the other direction so that everything's laying flat, laying flat. All right, I can remove my clamps 
and I'm going to do the same thing on my other sides, sides first, otherwise you never get in there. All right, so we have four sides. I wasn't neat about it. I just did it haphazardly. I'm going to do my first two sides first. I'm going to do kind of the same thing I did before, trying not to get any puckers in it. If you're ever having trouble with a project, some tools that can help you is this is referred to as a bone folder. You can go over things with that. And I also have a burnisher somewhere around here that looks like that. So you would just come in like that. All right, but I'm not going to need that. It's pretty adhered. And I'm going to come up to the last strip. All right, she's ready to go. What I'm going to do next is just trim at her edges using the straight edge. And I'll see you back in a little bit. So we have our photos ready to go. I'm back to our painted frames and um, I'm going to go ahead and distress them. I'm going to pull off some paint from some high-end details that will reveal the coloring in the wood underneath. And that's going to just give us a little dimensionality. I just have a little block. I think this is about a, oh, 120, something like that, um, maybe. I tend to use between an 80 and a um, 220 and when I'm doing certain um, types where I want everything to get really smooth I use the finer, the higher the number, the finer the grit. There's no science to it, no perfection. I don't want you cut, counting details and did I get that one? It did, no, put your type A personality away. Just be a messy mud pie kid and play. I want you to notice too that I have used um, only one coat of paint on this. It all it did the job. There was no reason to go back and do more. Again, I'm just going over the high points, and the dimensionality will come out. So this next product is called milk oil. It's um, a form of hemp oil, but milk oil is Miss Mustard Seed's hemp oil, which is very clear, very pure. She has sourced it at some really incredible location where it's not going to taint the color that you have on there. Now we have black, but if I was doing a white, you could see with regular hemp oils that it might yellow it a little bit. This is going to be as clear in your application as possible and you're not going to get that. I just put a little bit in here, probably too much, but I'll move on to another project with it. So what we're going to do now is anytime you work with um, a milk paint, you need a top coat. There are actual top coats. There are different waxes. I have a couple of them here. This one here is natural and this one is clear. So in the future, we'll work with them and we'll see the difference. But um, I'm going to go in with the hemp oil and you're going to see how all this detail is going to just come through. And then all the areas where we sanded, we're getting those warm tones from the under color. So it might be the gold, it might be the wood. So I'm just going to slather this on till it pools slightly. And when it's sat for a little bit, I'm going to come back and rub it off. When it's dry, I'm going to put my, our uh, artwork together. All right. So this is the actual soak-in moment. But you can see the difference between the one that is undone and the one that's done. I'm going to take an old rag, and I'm just going to rub it up. 
And look how luscious that is. Or as we say in our house, luscious. You just want to get all the excess up and the stuff that's staying, kind of almost burnish it in a little bit. Just so any residue isn't lingering and getting sticky or anything. The first time I used hemp oil, um, I asked my boss, I said, how do you use this stuff? She goes, just put it onto a pools. But what I failed to hear was, and then wipe it off. So that was a sticky mess. And there you have it. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. It won't be long and then we'll assemble. Well, our frames are ready. And uh, here's the second one of our photos. It's just gonna go into the little cutout. Fits real nice. Same thing with this one. So I've got a number of brads here. These are the very small, little, small headed nails. I just got those at Home Depot. I'm gonna look for See if maybe I see some of my previous holes. That's half the battle sometimes. All right, let's see how that one turned out. There you go. Same subject matter, snow on trees. I've got a nice set here, but I don't know if you noticed these Frames don't match. They're the same size, but they are totally different creations, and that's okay. We will blend nicely, both being uh, black and having the same treatment on them. So I'm going to put this one aside and do the next one. All right, two down. And now we're going to go ahead and put the wire backing on. So um, I will finesse these, make them a little bit neater and nicer, but while rushing for you, they're a little sloppy. We'll be okay with that. When putting together a wire on the back of um, a piece like this, there is different gauge wire. And thicker, thinner, you can see three of them right here. And when you buy them, they're going to tell you how much weight that they'll hold. Always err on the side of doing something heavier than your object. You just never know. You want to be on top of that. Um, one of the things I suggest you do not do is there's some wires that are not woven. If you look closely at this, you'll see it's a twisted cord. You want that. The twisted cord is going to have the most resiliency in holding these up. But for this weight, I don't have to go as heavy as that. This one will do, it is woven. And what I'm gonna do is find two eyes, and I'm gonna come down the same amount on both sides, let's say eight inches. Get all that threading in there. Then we're gonna take our wire, we're going to loop it through one side, loop it through the other. I think most of you have done this before, but you're going to give yourself a good length because these are heavier frames. No glass in it, so it won't be that bad. I just, but I'm just like that. I like to give myself lots of length. Our wire cutter, remember, is on here. Just a little wiggle. Stretch them out, and you're going to lace them around themselves. And that's going to create your greatest resistance. I like to go in and actually loop it against itself. Come back. And finish weaving it around. Give it just a little play. Please tell me I'm holding it the right way. 
So this is our first photograph. Can you get it up there? Well, I'll get the wire on the other one and we'll have some shots for you to see them let the tail of this video. Thank you so much for joining me on my first solo video. I'm Kathy. I am from West End Vintage. I have a shop inside of Vintage 61 Storehouse, and that is where you will find us in Orangsburg, Pennsylvania. I thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great time, and please be creative and enjoy.